please welcome to the stage, Brandon Wolf. Well, good morning, and, and I want to first thank the White House team for having me here today. You know, I have to start by acknowledging my fellow survivors of hate-fueled violence, the families and friends of those who've been stolen from us and everyone directly impacted who made the courageous decision to be here with us this morning. And I say courageous because it takes tremendous courage to get up and face the world every day again let alone join this important conversation that will undoubtedly tear open wounds and leave them feeling fresh. Because that's what hate violence does. It shatters communities. It shreds lives. And it leaves deep, tangled scars in its wake. I will never forget the night that hate-fueled violence turned my life upside down. The moment an ordinary night with friends became an extraordinary tragedy that rocked the entire globe. In the early hours of June 12, 2016, everything about my life was normal. It was just after 2 a.m. A night with friends was winding to a close. I was just washing my hands at a bathroom sink. I remember for some reason a poster on the wall at drag queens' faces painted in vibrant colors. I remember this plastic cup teetering on the edge of the sink, looking like it might tumble to the floor. I remember how, how cold the water was from the faucet. And I remember gunshots. I remember the hair jolting up on the back of my neck. I remember, I remember panic, a, a sprint for the emergency exit. I remember willing myself to put one foot in front of the other, eyes locked on a sliver of light from a door left ajar. I remember wishing I got a chance to say goodbye to my parents, convinced that I would die right then and there. Some days I still feel like I can hear every one of the 110 rounds pumped into the club from an assault rifle. A man fueled by hate charged into Orlando's Pulse nightclub and opened fire that morning, murdering 49 mostly LGBTQ people of color among them were my best friends, Drew and Juan, who suffered 19 gunshot wounds. They never made it home to say goodbye. Those 49 people, my best friends, our stolen loved ones, they're not just numbers or statistics. They're missing faces at birthday parties. They're empty seats at dinner tables. They are the human cost of hate violence. Listen, rejecting extremism, combating violence, those things are not partisan issues. They're American issues. I have seen the power of hatred. It ripped my entire community apart, stole those I loved the most, and quite frankly, it still haunts me today. That's why I can say with confidence that we must combat hate and do everything in our power to push back against it. We must draw inspiration from today's summit to ask ourselves how will we make our country better, safer, and freer from hate's grip. We have to decide today that we will no longer stand on the sideline. I'll be honest, it's going to take every single one of us to make good on our promise of creating a more perfect union. And that's why I am so honored to be working alongside each and every one of you toward a world, a country that we can all be proud of. And it's an honor to be in partnership with an administration who really understands the value of our voices and the importance of our stories. We are really lucky to have the leadership of our vice president. She is someone who has spent her entire career fighting for justice for survivors of violence and fighting to put a stop to hate-based violence. As district attorney of San Francisco, she established a hate crimes unit in her office and pushed to end outdated practices which had hampered efforts to bring perpetrators of hate crimes to justice. As Attorney General of California, she made sure that statewide law enforcement was aware of their responsibility to address these crimes and established an annual report so that the public knew the full extent of the problem. 
And of course, she continued that advocacy as a senator, where she introduced a bill to finally make lynching a hate crime in this country. Of course, we were all very glad to see the president finally sign that bill into law earlier this year. And so it is with great honor and privilege that I would like to introduce a leader who has been a fearless champion against hate, Vice President Kamala Harris. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Brandon, I want to say to you publicly what I said to you privately. Um, your courage, born out of such a violent tragedy, has been consistent and enduring. Long after the cameras left the scene of that horrific crime, you have used your voice to represent the voices of so many Consistently, you have been doing this work. You inspire so many of us, and I thank you for your leadership. You are a national leader. Thank you. Thank you. 